Now we're going to get, however, to the very essence of the bunker lesson. We have a T and a ball, and if you could imagine a T underneath the ball in the sand, that's going to tell you exactly how we're going to play this shot today. Because what I want you to do when you use a club in the bunker is I want you to take the club and take the imaginary T that's down in the sand under the ball, and I want you to picture hitting the T right about there, about a half an inch below the, bottom, the top part of the tee or the bottom of the ball. So you're going to take this club, hit this part of the tee, and then you're going to turn the face over the same way you did on all the shots that we've talked about when you have to hit that 185 yard shot. So this is a regular golf shot. You don't have to learn a new golf shot for bunker play. This is going to stand you in very good stead for many, 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 many years as your basic bunker shot without having to worry about sliding the club under the ball. We're going to hit a regular golf shot and you're going to be amazed at how high and how nicely the ball comes out even to a situation and I've started right here very near this bunker wall and we have a the wall of the bunker here is fairly intimidating and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ball and I'm going to put it on this tee push it down in the sand so that the ball is actually slightly down in the sand. I'm going to take my 8 iron just as a demonstration for how the ball comes up when you use this technique. I'm going to go down into the sand with the club the same way I would if I were driving the downhill nail. The face is going to be open and it's going to rotate down into the sand and turn over this way as though I'm going to drive the toe into the wall of the bunker. Now, it's incredibly counterintuitive. It really doesn't seem to make much sense. But I'm going to show you this shot with an 8 iron this near to a lip of this size. And if we can get it over a lip this size, then we're going to be able to certainly do it with a sand wedge or a lob wedge or a gap wedge. So what I'm going to do first before I hit this, and this is not a practice swing, this is a demonstration swing in the video. So you're not allowed to take a practice swing and hit the sand in a regular bunker or you're penalized. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit the sand, turning the face of the club over as though I'm going down to where the tee is. And I want you to observe how high the particles of sand fly off the club face. They will fly out clearly getting over this, the wall of this bunker. You notice how high. I'm going to do that again. You notice those particles of sand came up very clearly getting free of this lip of this bunker. And if you think about the ball as just another particle of sand, certainly it's bigger and heavier, but it will come up as nicely as the sand particles will if you go down to the tee and turn the face over. It's rather like having a third hand on the club. Your two hands are holding here, your club head is down here, and that's your third hand. It goes down into the sand and then it tosses everything out if you rotate the face and turn it over the way we do with uh, all the other shots in golf except you're chipping and putting. So now all the full shots we're going to use the same technique even in the bunker and by having my hand down in there and throwing it over this way I can toss it up and out and this is very advantageous on bunker shots that are fairly long and you don't have to do anything really different just hit a good bunker shot and the 8 iron makes it go out a little farther. So I'm going to try to take the club down into the sand, turn the face over, and see that the sand and the ball come up over this lip with the 8 iron. And the ball comes out and out toward the flag because I've used the 8 iron. It doesn't come up quite as high and it goes out a little farther. I don't have to do anything different than the basic bunker shot. So understanding that this idea of using the club face and actually releasing the face and turning it over to hit the little home run really doesn't seem right at first blush but you have to really understand what's going on and what's going on is you have a lot of loft on this club more than you would think and if you use it correctly and break the tee or try to hit the tee down here I hit this one about there when you hit the tee about there and turn the face over the ball does come up nicely now, since we're going to use this same technique for all the shots, now it would make sense to think 
that if I have more loft in my hand, I've got the eight iron here, if I take a pitching wedge, my pitching wedge here has 48 degrees of loft, and if I do the same shot, There's going to be more loft, so the ball will tend to come out a little higher. It comes out higher, and it doesn't run as far. So the next one I'm going to take is my 52 degree. That's my gap wedge. And my gap wedge has a little more loft than the sand wedge, but it also has a little wider and bouncier sole. Now bounce on the sole of a, of a wedge is simply the idea of taking the front end of your skis, if you ski, water ski or snow ski, and you'll know that the front end of your skis is always turned up. That's so that when you get into the sand or, or the snow and the water that it doesn't suck itself down into the water or the snow but it rides on top. And that's generally what happens with sand irons. They have a little bit of curve that goes up at the leading edge comes back down lower at the back side of the club so that when you hit the sand with it, it doesn't tend to penetrate quite as much as say the eight iron or the pitching wedge. So here we have a gap wedge. We're going to do the same shot, break the tee, turn the face over. The ball comes out higher, not quite as far. So now we have our sand wedge here that has 55 degrees as opposed to my 52 degree gap wedge. I'm going to do the same thing, break the tee, turn it over, comes out higher and softer yet. I got my, my lob wedge and for me that's a 58 degree club. Yours might be a 60. You take the club down to the tee, turn it over, and because of the nature of the club, it comes up high and soft. So each one of the clubs in your bag, especially I want you to think about the pitching wedge, the gap wedge, the sand wedge, and the lob wedge. Those four clubs are functional in the bunker for you. And if you have a lot longer bunker shot and you feel like your sand wedge can't get there, then go to the pitching wedge or the gap wedge and use that club to help you out to get more distance and still use the same technique. Don't change the technique in the bunker. The bunker technique is always going to be the same. Break the tee, turn the face over. Break the tee, turn the face over. Make sure you have enough loft to get it above the bunker and you're home free.